broad topics, broad minds, broad hosts, but not just for broads. This is Broadscast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. Welcome to Broadscast. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Kim Goldman. Hello, Jackie McDougal. <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh my gosh, that's so passe. <laughs> I know. Remember, we have this conversation every single year of how long you can say Happy New Year to somebody. I don't and, even think I've said it at all. Maybe I've just been antisocial. Oh, well, don't yeah. you? you? Okay. I say it to everybody. I say it to people at the grocery store. I say it to, you know, people at the gas station who are pumping their own gas while I do mine. Um, really? Just, like across the bay? Yeah. I'm just a happy new year ray of sunshine. So <laughs> happy new year to everybody and happy new year to you, Kim. Thank you. You and too. I, and I'll stop saying it about uh, January 15th, probably. Oh, is that, is that the time? Like yeah. The half, half the year? Half well, the month? Well, I mean, you know, like, like on the show, I wouldn't necessarily say it again in a week because, you know, but if I hadn't seen anybody, you know, if there's somebody I hadn't seen, then I'm all about the happy new year, you know, greeting. But anyway. Huh. All right. <laughs> well, I just think it's a great way to say, like, I hope things are kicking butt for you. I don't know. Something like that. You know what? I support you in your endeavor, and uh, I, 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 I encourage everybody else to follow your lead so that we continue to have the happiest new year as we walk into a firestorm of <laughs> God knows what. Right? right? Oh, my gosh. It's so funny because, you know, at the end of 2016, I mean, as everybody knows, like, there were so many celebrity deaths, and there were so many. There were three, but um, it just seemed like, 2016 was like, hey, wait, I'm not done, you know, and so everybody was, oh, come on, 2017, like, all of a sudden, things were going to get miraculously better. Right. You know? Yeah, I don't, uh, and then we, and then we realized we're now on the countdown to the uh, Trump train moving oh into, gosh. not even moving into the White House, um, <laughs> like, spending some time there, right, perhaps. Right. Um, yeah, it's having play sure. dates at the White House. Exactly. Um, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. I think uh, everybody talks about like two sixty uh, two thousand sixteen being so horrible. Like, I don't really, I don't know if it was just because of the 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 political stuff that was going on, but other than that, like, was it was it a horrible year? I mean, did well, I miss something? I mean, well, I mean worse I, than any other year. Um, or was it just because of the politics? I mean, everybody well, the politics about, like, certainly took over for yeah. 2016, and it was so yeah. negative and so shocking. And I know some people um, listening would be like, "It's not shocking," you know. It's it's. I mean, it's it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible that we have such a um, a horrible human being, you know, about to be inaugurated. Um, and there was just so much negativity and so much. I think it was just everybody walked around with that, like not in their back of, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I actually think that the people that the, that the trumpeteers um, were probably very shocked that he made it into the white house. Please, <laughs> Nobody was more shocked. He was shocked. Yeah. Nobody was more shocked than he was. You know, he was up yeah. there like, are you people kidding me? I mean, yeah. the, the lack of respect he must have for his followers. I would think like I he tried so hard to get out of it, I think. And the, the, yeah. and the, and the crazier he would be, the more they're like, yes, you know, yeah. Well, there was someone that tweeted the other day that that said um, he could tweet uh, Bible, Taco Bell, and guns, and people would be like, "Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious." Yeah, but yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna we're, do? People are gonna march, That's but I will say, doing their marching. Yeah, women. There's a women's march, and I love. It. Didn't um, we, you you. Yeah. Did you post something on on uh, our our Facebook page? Uh, was it the Washington Post? You don't even know who it was. That it's Washington Post point. Express. Oh, so well, they okay. expressed their way to failure. <laughs> didn't they? So tell tell our listeners what they did. It, it was like a zero to sixty to failure. Um, they uh, did this cover story on the march, and they used the male symbol, uh, or for the you know for the the male gender symbol. Um, as opposed to using the female symbol, which used to be in our little broadcast logo. Um, if only they had <laughs> consulted with us. Um, so clearly, and so seriously, like they released this story, a cover story, and then there is the big male symbol uh, grace in the cover of, of, you know, the... So did they did they issue a, a statement or something? I mean, like how how 
how does that get passed? I mean, we've jo- we've joked about this on on, on the show before because I wrote a book and I had proofreaders and stuff, and every comma, every space, every extra space yeah. was like, I mean, every little nuance was accounted for. So how in the heck did that pass by every proofreader? Or like, what do you do? They do they make a statement about what happened? No, I I've um, was as you were saying that I was looking it up. Um... Yeah, I was trying. I was yesterday, or whenever, whenever you posted, I was trying to think like, okay, what could their what could their argument be? You know, like I'm trying to think of all of the things that they. Oh, that was intentional. Yeah, you know, because they put it in pink, even um, <laughs> because no. we wouldn't be able to understand it if it weren't in pink. Right. <laughs> oh, it's pink. It must be girl. Yeah, <laughs> it must be for us. So yeah, that um, was. Um, I, I don't see any sort of statement. Um, I think they're just you know buried. Uh under a tremendous amount of embarrassment and, uh, I don't shame, know. The cloak, the cloak of shame. <laughs> you can't yeah. come out just yet. Yeah. But the funny thing is, it's like, you know, I've noticed, and I'm sure you have, that these stories will be huge and then they'll go away, never to be heard again. So just like ride the wave, know you look like an idiot and, you know, I'm sure they'll fire. Let, let Trump tweet something and then that'll be the cover story. Then we're good. We're yeah, right. Stuff. They'll fire yeah. the intern. I'm doing my air quote intern because it's always some sort of intern that, that messes up. Yeah. The, you know, <laughs> the intern in chief over at the Washington Post. <laughs> exactly. Uh. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, one thing, um, I mean, you know, you and I do the show live and some places it airs live and then other stations pick our show up later. Um, and we love them all, whether they take us live or uh, recorded later. So sometimes when you're listening and you're like, what? That happened three days ago. Like, that's what you, the station in your area, that's when they run us. And, we, you know, that, just understand that we're not that <laughs> behind in our news. Because there are rumors <laughs> that are happening that big things are going to happen with Trump. Hey, but I got to tell you, you know, the, um, okay, so on, is it, uh, com- I don't even know, it's oh, HBO or Showtime, I don't even know, the 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 day later, John Oliver, whatever. whatever oh yeah. Yeah. Show. So when his, sh- his show first started um, doing promos for it, I was like, that is such a lame, I don't even get it. Like they're going to do the show week after all the news hit. It's brilliant. So <laughs> we were, he modeled his, his program after us. Because, See, there you go. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I noticed that sometimes because we'll try to bring up a topic and you know, we sometimes get concerned because we love all of our stations. We love all of our markets. And so we want you guys, to have the most updated, uh, you know, info that we have, but this is the most updated info that we have at the time we go live. So there's that, you know. <laughs> <Little disclaimer. laughs> no, but I, I, you know, there are rumors going around that uh, big things will happen with Trump today, and um, you know, I don't want to like just t- talk about rumors when they're not actual, but. Uh, you know, if somebody happens to listen in a couple of days and they're like, wait a minute, why are they talk- not mentioning that? Um, oh, well, you know what I mean? That's what I'm, yeah. that's all I'm saying. That's all oh, I'm saying. Oh, now I'm in the know because I didn't hear anything about any rumors. Well, we'll have to talk offline. So, and see if I'm right. So, um, but anyway, let's go back to, uh, we haven't talked to our listeners since before the holidays, really. You know, yeah, this was a long break. Yeah, I and kind of forgot we had a show for a while. <laughs> and it's so funny because, you know, so many people are like, all right, it's 2017. I'm motivated. I'm ready. I cannot get out of my holiday mode. Did you take your tree down? Yes. Oh, oh okay. my gosh. Well, that's the tree. That's the first start. Yeah. The tree that I called our wagon wheel coffee table. Why? Um, if it, You know, it's a, when Harry met Sally reference um, because – uh, there's a point. Oh, oh, the wagon <laughs> wheel coffee table. Yeah, got it. There's got a it, wagon wheel it. coffee table that, you know, ultimately they'll be fighting over at the end of a marriage. Well, right. my husband is, you know, the most lovely man in the world and just turned 50. Yay, happy birthday, babe. Um, but he, we have this tree that we yeah. got. I know, right? right? He can kick and stretch. Um, but we have this tree that we bought back in like 2003. It's oh. an artificial pre-lit nine foot tree it's it, beautiful i would not have thought right it's so it's like before they started making mass produced artificial like I, I don't feel like any of the newer artificial trees do that can even touch what we have like i love our tree right right and so the art of the uh lights the you know that are attached to it do not they don't work anymore so we have to light the tree every year um i want to just clip off the old lights but He's concerned about that. I don't know why. But um, 
every year, like this thing is such a bear to come in, to take in and take out and put up and fluff and the whole thing. Um, right. That I swear it's the only thing all year that we really just don't agree on. So every year I'm like, well, we'll get a new tree. It's no big deal. Um, Where do but, you guys store that thing? It's I, I, I have like a little six foot thing that it's all tucked away in a box and I can't believe that I got it in a box. Um, and that's gigantic, that thing that you have. It is. You tuck that thing all up in a box and store it somewhere? It folds in and stuff. And then last year, um, we we would like wrap it in, in rugs and stuff or like blankets. And so last year, uh, as a gesture of goodwill, I actually um, purchased one of those like big Christmas tree bags that you get at like the container store or something. Yeah. And um, thinking that like, yay, look at me, honey, supporting. He's He actually wants to get rid of the tree. And so then this year I agreed, fine, at the, after Christmas we'll get rid of the tree. And then I saw him, you know, at the beginning of the year, uh, folding it up and putting it back in the bag. So I just kept my Aww. mouth shut. I just kept my mouth shut. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. But that's nice. our that's our thing, the Christmas tree. It will either make or break us someday. Um, yeah, we didn't do a tree. I, 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 yeah, that just didn't happen. I brought out my 99 cent store, uh, decorations and put them all up around my house. Um, and I have left my token reindeer door handle up that's been on the, on my pantry door for, I don't even know how many years that stays up all year round. Uh Um, I did nothing. I couldn't. Is your menorah up? Uh, the menorah is up in my window as a uh, a show of um, the middle finger to my HOA who tried to make me take it down. I'm going to just – that's just – that's like, that's like my mezuzah. The Jews keep the mezuzah on the front door. That My menorah in the window is going to be it. Um, yeah, yeah, just – I don't think we ever talked about that on the show because – and we have to um, – Oh, we didn't? We oh. have to get to our guest in a, in a minute. But, um, you know, Kim's HOA has made it clear that her menorah – well, you could tell the story – should not be in the window all year long. Inside your house, right? I've lost Kim. Here you are, Kim. Hello. Hi, sorry, I lost you there for a second. Yeah. So, um, you, the, your HOA decided that you should not have your menorah in your house in the window. Right, because it was um, it was uh, outside of the window of the allotted holiday decorations. Uh, time period that the HOA allows. So um, they told me I had to take it down and I went nuts. I was like, it is inside my house. And did you ever, and did you ever win that uh, argument? Um, Yes. I fought tooth and nail and told them that the, uh, that I had a direct line to the uh, ACLU. And if they proceeded to force me to take it down, that I would be filing something. um, And then I got a letter that says my, my uh, issue has been resolved. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah. That's oh, exciting. I'm mad. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so uh, we but- are um, very excited today because. Okay. So we have our first guest, uh, Beth Feldman. She is a PR exec, uh, our former PR exec for the TV, for the TV studios and, uh, networks and all that good stuff. And she, uh, left that world that the daily grind and, and is an entrepreneur. Um, I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've heard of rollmommy.com and she's done a ton of stuff, um, with a bunch of different websites and entertainment properties. And now she's joining us in the wonderful world of podcasting. Beth, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Beth. Hi. Happy, so, new, happy year. new Year. Happy New Year. So, <laughs> Beth, you, I mean, you were like, you were in it. You were doing that daily grind, you know, never leave work. Uh, PR stuff for TV, like at what point were you like, I need to make a change? Well, it's funny because I did it back. uh, I left about 10 years ago. Uh, I wound up, I was a publicist for CBS and I handled PR for several divisions of the company and worked on lots of shows. And I, I got to a point where I felt like, you know what? I have launched all these different shows. It's time to do something different. And at the time, and this is back in like 2005, I got bitten by the, um, the blogging bug. And I started blogging before anyone knew, really knew what blogging was. Right. It was and, like the dawn that, of the mommy blogger. 
Yes. And that's when Roll Mommy was literally born. My kids were little and I decided it was time for me to to give it a shot and share my harried stories of, of being a working mom. And that's awesome because, I mean, right. it started off as like a, a – I could hear Kim go, <laughs> well, we, talk, we talk a lot about, on the show about like the pivot. And, um, I mean, you, you were pivoting, you know, long before that became like a like a trending thing. I mean, that's a scary thing to leave such a cush – I don't want to say cush, but like a – like a, <laughs> I didn't mean cush, but like a consistent, so you know, air-quoting stable job with a network to go off on your own. I mean, that's, that's it's brave and daring in the same breath. Well, I mean, and here's a crazy thing. And, and, and it's like, and bringing in a Trump reference kind of makes it so weird for me because it's like so anti me right now. But um, I became really interested in The Apprentice at the time. And I was really fascinated how people were, you know, coming up with ideas and launching businesses and were super successful at it. And, and I was, you know, a, a, I was always a dreamer. And I felt like, you know what? I could do this. I really think that if I went ahead and left, I could still take what I had, for, you know, or what I learned from being at the network and bring it with me into a new life. And and I left and I did it and it was the hardest thing I ever did and there were times where I had regrets. And I, you know, there's still times when I see friends who are still there to say, what the heck was I thinking? Mm. But I've been fortunate enough that I've, I've still have worked with them over the years on lots of different yeah, shows. Because of all and, um, it, and it was really, you know, for me, you know, now looking back at it, I can't believe it was 10 years ago. I, I feel like, wow, I did it. I, I survived. I did it. And I built a name for myself outside of CBS. Because I I called it like the sorry but do I knew, know you phase. You sort of have this <laughs> false sense of hey I, you know I'm a big shot. Everyone knows me. Everyone will take my calls. And then you leave, and then nobody takes your calls, or <laughs> five people will take your calls. Right. And, and that um, that's a frustrating place to be in, and and it's a sobering experience. And I feel like the people that have never left don't understand that, and they have this false sense of self until you jump off the cliff and try it. And then you realize, holy crap, yeah. what did I just do? Well, it's amazing <laughs> when you don't have the name of the studio or the network or the show to, uh, you know, to, to back you up. Back you up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the, the other thing too, though, is, and we didn't even plan, I didn't plan to go in this direction, but like, you know, when we get into our fields, um, we're in college or after college and we kind of think about what we want to do with our lives, like, we never think, okay, when I'm in my 30s or 40s, I'm going to want to pivot. Does Will this give me the experience where I can go out on my own and be an entrepreneur? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think public relations is one of those fields that, you you know, if you're good and, and people have a lot of respect for you and they and you have those contacts that you can do that on your own. You can't necessarily go out and do it on your own to begin with. Um, some do and some are successful, but I think... It, it, you know, it's an interesting conversation to talk about um, with young people. Like at some point, if you have that entrepreneurial spirit, are you moving in a direction where you can, you know, branch off and do that? Well, yeah. And I think that I, I never would have dreamed of uh, going off on my own. I really didn't. I mean, I kind of felt like, you know, I had this, I had this vision of, all right, I'm going to work at a network and I'm going to, you know, get promoted and I'm going to be a VP and I'm going to do this. And I did that. And I did get all, I did attain all those levels. And yet I was still unhappy. And at the time we were at a different place. I want, it was, you know, 2007, this is right before the market went south mm -hmm. and my husband was doing well in his job and he said, take a chance. And at the time I said, okay, great. You know, because I was going to be the gravy. I was going to start over and do it. And then suddenly a year later he lost his job and I was no longer the gravy. I was the turkey. So I had to work a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. And, and yet to your point, you know, over the years, I've been really fortunate in that I have been able to still work with clients where you can name drop and say, Hey, I, I'm working with this great new show, or I'm still working with the network. And, and I feel like it's so important. And I think to your point about millennials, you need to build that solid foundation. Don't just graduate from school and say, Hey, I'm going to be, you know, the next big, you know, I, I'm going to be whatever, Steve Jobs, you know, there, there's a reason why Steve Jobs even got fired from his own job <laughs> because, he, you know, he pissed off a lot of people. Right. And 
and I feel like, you know, nowadays that's the big learning curve that millennials are, are starting to realize is that, you know what, maybe I do need more of a foundation to get me where I need to go rather than coming out of the starting gate saying, I'm a dreamer, I'm going to just do it. And, and the rest will just fall into place. I think it's such a different generation though. I mean, I, I was, I mean, my dad was at his job for, you know, 20, 30 years, you know, you, you didn't plan to pivot. You didn't plan to how you were going to move this, use this experience to move on. I mean, I think that's, you know, you settled in, you, you, you were in for the long haul, regardless if, if you, I mean, Jackie, how long was your dad? Oh my God. My dad know, fixed elevators for like 40 something years. But, you know, that's what I'm saying you didn't even think about how that was going to get you. I mean, the, the, the generation now, and you know, before, just right before that, they were always job hunting, you know, they're always looking for the next, next best thing. So I think, you know, there's got to be a blend because I appreciate that people want to always do better, get better. They want to be dreamers. They want to be entrepreneurs, whatever. But there's there's no loyalty anymore. Right, right. Maybe, maybe it's because companies don't offer that stability. But um, I don't know. I, I just well, think it's a different time, though. Uh, you know, and I do think that you have to have at a certain point in your career, whether it's your 20s, your late 20s into your 30s, that's your foundation years. And so that you can set your up, your 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 pivot up. Mm. for success. Mm -hmm. Because here's the sad part. There are people who are in their 50s who are looking over their shoulder because their time is running out wherever they are. And that's such a sad place, you know, sad yeah. feeling yeah. Um, that I've put in all these years and I'm going to get replaced by someone who's 30. And and that's the reality nowadays. And and I kind of feel like we all have to have that entrepreneurial spirit in us because at some point in our careers, whether we choose to or not, we're going to have to find the next thing. And, you know, you talk about what's going on in our world and our economy and the job market. And that's something that, you know, you have to be nimble. You have to be open to learn whether you're 30, 40, 50, even 60. And, and I think there are a lot of people that, you know, only had that one job and right. don't know anything else and feel paralyzed with that. And if, you know, if you talk to any successful entrepreneur, they don't really talk about, uh, many, well, many of them don't talk about retirement because they're loving what they do, you know? Like we're, when we're at a job and we're like punching the clock and sliding down a dinosaur, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we're like waiting for that, you know, when can I retire? But if you're doing what you love and, and loving what you do, um, then, you know, you don't have to have that. So let's talk about your latest uh, and greatest avenue, the the podcast. So why all like with all the success and all the great things you're doing, why all of a sudden or well, not all of a sudden you probably are like, you know, planning this for a long time, but why a podcast? Well, it's funny, you know, just when I said I started my blog back in 2005 when no one was blogging, I actually started a podcast about two years later and had been doing it on blog talk radio for a couple of years and then, you know, would come back to it, but it wasn't consistent. And the thing that I did love about it was I really enjoy the conversation and I find it's funny. I throw my life into, um, or my world into Facebook a lot of times where it's like, Oh, this is an interesting story. Oh, this is how I feel about this. This is what's going on in my life. And I started to think about, you know, every week is something different. And rather than it be role mommy, because my kids are older now, and, I, and I'm sort of not a mommy anymore. I'm a mother and, a, you know, going off in like the next phase. <laughs> mother bleep. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. And, and so I said, you know what? It's really the 52 weeks. What happens every week of our lives, whether it's things that are going on in the news and entertainment, things that relate to our own lives. I have my daughter who's a senior who's applied to colleges. So, you know, that's been all consuming. And, um, and I felt like, you know what, now is the right time to not only do this again, but do it consistently and, and, and really bring a voice that I feel like the, the 10 year wiser voice of, of what I did, you know, from, from 10 years ago mm -hmm. to now and, and, and really kind of having this conversation with people who might be going through various things in their life as parents where their kids might be younger. And I have that, you know, 
information to share. I want, you know, I'm going to bring in experts and, and people that, that make sense that would be, you know, that, that would want to join in the conversation. And I'm going to have different co-hosts every week. So this week I have um, Beth Rosen, who is one of the co-hosts of Chicago Nista Live, who I adore. And she's sort of like that big sister that I never had because she has her kids are she has four kids. They're older. So she's so she's always a couple of years ahead of me. And I'm, I've always been asking her questions over the years. You know, what now? <laughs> <laughs> right. Everyone needs it's like, you know, everyone needs that in the, you know, that person in their life. A so, mommy mentor. Uh, exactly. And um so yeah, so I feel like this is what I want to be doing next and I, I'm a talker. So now I can talk a little bit longer than just with my clients and, you know, with with my husband and my kids <laughs> who don't listen to me anymore. <laughs> right. Your husband's just relieved that you're doing it so, you know, you're, you're finding other co-hosts. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I did a thing with him. We did Keeping It Real with Beth and Darren a couple of years back. And uh, this is while he was in between uh, transitioning from his full time job to starting a new business. So he was kind of out of work and we were doing this show and having a lot of fun. And then he went and he got, you know, he started a new company. So I lost a co host. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But it's funny because you talk about um, starting a podcast way back when. And I think when you and I met, it was through when I was at uh, Warner Brothers doing Mom Logic. And yes. Um, and we actually were doing, uh, mom logic was doing like a little podcast and trying it out. And I remember the network executives like podcasts are never going to make money, you know? <laughs> and it was, right. and I, I was too early, you know? Um, that's exactly it. I, I always find like I have these ideas, the light bulb goes off. So the, the other part of it is what I'd like to do with it is, you know, do that Facebook live component to it, come up with something a little bit, you know, it's sort of like a podcast with a twist. So that's what I'm always looking for. Like, what else can we do? That's going to be a little Separate bit different. You. Yeah, right. So, um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm, I'm, you know, what I'm exploring, but I'm super excited to get it out there. And I feel like, you know, my voice through social media is, is pretty out there. So I, you know, I feel like, okay, now I've got a place to share it and to syndicate it. So this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> right. That's great. And so do you, um, do you kind of have all of your, your co-hosts lined up or, you know, should our listeners, uh, throw their hat in the ring to co-host with you s some weeks? Absolutely. I mean, the funny thing is, you know, when I put the, the word out that I wanted to do this, I, I think I have, I'm up to about 30 or 40 comments right now. And a lot of them are saying, oh my God, I want to be your co-host. And the cool thing is, is that the people who I have, that, that have been in my life over the last, you know, 20 some odd years in my career are so accomplished and so inspiring. So that when my friend who was a former, you know, a head of, of, a, of a huge stationary company who sold it and is fantastic says to me, I want to be um, a co-host. I was like, I can't wait. Or, or another friend who just landed a job is like a CEO of another company. So I've got all these amazing women mm -hmm. and men who are, you know, in my life that I feel like, Hey, you know, but somebody once called it six degrees of Beth Feldman. Somehow I'm like <laughs> connected to people. So I'll just be, I'll be like, yeah, sure. Let's get that person on the show. And, and the lovely thing is I also have my dear friends at CBS and once in a while, there'll be a good celebrity that I can put into the mix too. <laughs> right, right. Well, we've wow. certainly, you know, and we've worked with you and some of our favorite guests have, have come through you. So um, you definitely have the magic touch. Do you okay. find that, you know, we, we talk about this a lot on the show too, that, um, that women are, you can find a select few that are supportive, but a lot of women are, are out to get each other. I mean, do you find that you've struggled with that at all with you taking a leap of faith to leave your job and to kind of go out in the world that women have not been supportive or have you been surrounded by people that have been encouraging? I have that. I have a combination of both. And I have to tell you, I think a lot of the women that kind of started out with that same foundation of working in that corporate job for many, many years have the team building mentality that's built into their DNA. And I think that there are people that haven't had that experience, that it, there is more of that backstabbing nature that is upsetting or the copycat nature, like where I have come up with something and then I look over my shoulder and someone that I know that I shared it with all of a sudden is doing it too. And, <sighs> and, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, it gets, it just, it burns you, it gets you upset. And then you just shake it off and say, stay in your lane stay in your lane. There's always going to be those people that are, are going to see what you're doing and saying, I should do that. And, and that's what they start doing. And, right. um, and sometimes they do it better. <laughs> 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 so it's 
frustrating beyond belief. But you know what? It's like, and that's why I'm committing to, to doing what I think I do well. And, um, and even PR, like I never expected to be a publicist. That wasn't my lifelong dream. Um, but you know what? I'm good at it. And I guess it's like, all right, this is what I know. This is what I do. And, um, and, and it's really been that, that thing that has fueled me every step of the way. And I, I think as you grow, as you mature, you have confidence in yourself where it's like, forget them, screw them if they want to copy me or, or they're not happy for my success. I surround myself with the people who are happy, who are going to build me up and not knock me down. Right. I don't understand that whole thing because it's like the more successful one woman is, the more successful we all are. You know, and yeah. and I've you know, and and I'm getting into my little self help. Uh, Kim's rolling her eyes, uh, but <laughs> but but they say like I was re listening to something, and um, because I listen to all of my books instead of read them, and it was all about like if somebody has success in your life, that is a reflection. Like that is something you're supposed to be seeing, so you can have that too. Not it doesn't put you down. It it gives you ideas or it gives you inspiration. You know, but you talk about how people are copycatting. And so if you go over to iTunes, you could see there are hundreds of podcasts that may look similar to something you're doing, something we're doing. Um, There's always going to be competition or, you know, something else out there that's uh, that people are listening to or not listening to because a lot of podcasters are not, you know, they're not consistent or they don't find their voice or whatever it is. But so here you are starting this podcast and, you know, as a PR rep, how, how would you market it? How would you tell somebody that they should listen to 52 weeks uh, over maybe something else that seems similar? What What is the special thing that they will get from your show that maybe they won't get anywhere else? Well, I, I have to tell you, a billion years ago, one of the first shows I ever worked on was the Ricky Lake show, the original Ricky Lake show. Wow. And um, and I'll never forget the catchphrase that we used for the um, the person who had helped create created the show. His name was Garth Ansier. And Garth Ansier had his we, we always said it. He had the finger on the pulse of young adult programming. And I say I have the finger on the pulse of the, the mom space. I have the finger on the pulse of what's going on that we're, that people my in my demographic are going to care about. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, you know, and, and the funny thing is, is that when I share things on Facebook, when I, you know, say, hey, you should take a look at this article today. I'm a like a journalism hound. I devour everything. So I'm weeding through everything that I'm seeing and sharing the things that I think are going to be relevant to you and that you're you might just care about and want to engage in the conversation. And that's where, you know, I'm curating some things to talk about today that might be relevant to your life. And and hopefully you'll walk away learning something, laughing. Um, you might be mad. You might be disagreeing with me. But um, but that's what I want from people. I want, you know, you to kind of think. And, and we're all so busy in our lives that if there are, you know, there are five things you can come away with each week where, oh, I found out about this in the news. Oh, I have to go see this movie. Oh, my God, that product is life changing for me. And wasn't that a great author they just spoke to? Then that was a good show. Right, right. And I, you know, it- the one thing that you do is you share things that you find and a lot of people on Facebook in that space, they feel like they, they share only what they do and it becomes right. like you, you kind of, you end up hiding the person because it feels all spammy. <laughs> That's it. You're what? so not just <laughs> not the, Hey, look at me. Look what I did today. And I guess being an entertainment publicist really taught me well too, because some of my favorite stars that I worked with were the ones who were the most humble, who would engage in conversation and ask about me. And it would be an ongoing, you know, it would be a two way conversation, mm-hmm. not a all about me conversation. So I totally agree. You know, I, I think that the best talk shows, the best you know, podcasts, radio shows are the ones where people learn something. I mean, I'm addicted to John Tesh. I am the biggest nerd ever. But really? I'm to- yes. I'm like totally love John Tesh because every time John Tesh says something, I look at my husband. I said, we need to do that and get that book. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Really? I haven't heard that name forever. Hey, so, so Beth, speaking of books, so you, 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 you're a two time author or maybe more, but peeing in peace back in 2008, <laughs> which I love. And then see mom run back in 2009. So yes. do you have any other books in you or do you feel like 
podcasting and like Facebook Live and all that stuff has sort of run over the book market. I, you know what? I think I would have to, I, I want to get my kids through college. I feel like I'm so distracted right now that I don't have the time to sit and, and really write for an extended period of time. And the funny thing is I'm right now I'm doing this podcast. I'm sitting in the place where I wrote peeing in peace and with my writing partner, we buckled down in a, in my basement and, and wrote that book. She, she's a producer at extra. And I remember us writing the book at like, we called it the bunker and you, you know, and you really need to devote the time. And with a book, it's like, there's so much focus and, and the words you like, you want to cr- paint a picture with your words. And, um, and that's, and I love writing, but I kind of felt like I got a bit burnt on it. And, you know, and if I'm going to write something new, it, it's go- I want it to be something different. And the funny thing is it's the sorry, but do I know you kind of book is in me. And I know at one point in my life, I'm going to do that <laughs> because I, I, I want to, you know, sort of share that journey and say, you can get to the other side, but I'm still, I'm still climbing the hill and I want to have a a couple more things under my belt to say, to really share that transformation. So that might be the next book, right. Um, after I get through getting my daughter to college and my son (laughs) and selling the house, whatever, we'll figure it out. (laughs) Have you found that though? I mean, you know, Kim is like always elbow deep in her next book and writing and, um, you know, deadlines and editing and all of that. And like, you know, my, my history is, has been blogging. I haven't blogged in such a long time, but cause do you find that, you know, putting your thoughts on paper and coming coming up with a clever way to communicate it, it's so much more work than off the cuff talking well, that's what i'm saying that like you know the, the I, I just feel like that the book industry has has shifted so much i mean we don't even really print books anymore there's no promo like it's just it's so that, that the whole landscape of of being an author and writing is so different and i wonder sometimes if it's you know because of the internet and social media and like podcasting world is just everything, you know, the immediate gratification of it's right there versus taking two years to get a book out. You know, I mean, I don't know. I wonder. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I have, I've worked in the past with Jane Green, who I adore, and she's, you know, best selling novelist and has been around for a very long time. And, you know, you almost look at it as like, she's like the celebrity of authors where every year, you know, she disappears for three, four months at a time where she locks herself in and writes that book. And then she goes back to her life again, or she goes promoting it once it comes out, but she's got it down to a science. And I I feel like if you really, truly want to compete at that level, you have to do that. You have to lock yourself away and really be focused. And we're in such, and you know, we are in such a fast moving world right now where people's attention spans are, they're non-existent that if I'm going to put something out, I want it to be so fantastic. And I don't want to compromise that. Um, and, and it's funny, but you know, when I wrote peeing in peace with, with my friend Yvette, I thought it was hilarious and it really was like, it was great. It was funny. Um, and at that time we didn't have, um, a platform, you know, we just were growing our platform. And again, it's like, I guess we, you know, we peaked before our time. I bet you (laughs) being in peace would have been great because it would have been a, a companion book to shitty moms from the NBC producers, but it was 10 years before it's time. So I'm waiting, I'm biding my time so that I finally know, wow, now, now the time is right to do this. And in the meantime, I'm going to go through my journey doing the things, you know, back to your point, Jackie, about doing the things that I love, because if you give up that, you lose that sense of who am I and what makes me happy. Right. And, and, you know, when you have to clock in every day and, and to do the work and to get the paycheck, like, I don't know, it's just, I, I no longer am willing to live (laughs) that way, you know, and, and fortunately in, in this business, I haven't lived that way in a long time, you know, because I move on to different projects and stuff like that. But it's not, it's also fun to do your entrepreneurial stuff and, and, you know, and get a little bit of a mix. But I have to make one comment, which may or may not make me um, unpopular with New Yorkers. But, uh, you know, you're from New York, you know, the New York scene, you're, you're in it. But one thing I think that you have, like, sometimes when I read a book, or I listen to a podcast, or um, what, listen to an entire XM station, um, 
that people when people are from New York, it's very inside baseball. You know, it's yeah. like I'm listening to a party I wasn't invited to. And it feels weird, you know, and one thing that you, you're you're you in some ways, of course, you know, you're from New York, but in other ways, you'd never know because you just connect with people at a human level. And it's not necessarily like you have to be in that inner circle. And I think that's a great thing for your podcast. Well, that's so sweet. And I have to tell you, I'm originally from Brooklyn and I'm from the Brooklyn that is not the she she part of Brooklyn now. It's more of the I'm a Brooklyn born and bred and moved, you know, and, and moved to Manhattan when I had graduated college. And I feel like I'm the New Yorker who's the humble pie New Yorker. So when I go to a gala or an event where it's like, you know, the top 1% is there, it's it I'm I still feel like a fish out of water. I don't feel comfortable in that kind of circle. I feel way more comfortable in New England. I went to UMass Amherst. I feel way more comfortable Woo-hoo! in Chicago. <laughs> Yay! Woo! Or like um or in Nashville when I used to do the PR for, you know, for the CMA awards. Like the, I I love being with real people and and getting to meet people who are just so real and so kind and and again so humble because you never know what your next opportunity is what might happen and and I'm just grateful for all those experiences that I've had throughout my life and for the the you know the different people who I have come across who have been so wonderful and the jerks who have made me realize that you know now <laughs> it, like I'm I would never stand for that but I you know but and and that's and that is the issue with New York unfortunately there's a lot of people um who are full of themselves, who are very much like they, you know, they own the the place, get out of my way, or, or they're going to this, you know, there's this top end restaurant or whatever. And, and I enjoy a good place to eat. But at the same time, I, you know, I, I'm also into Chipotle every other day. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So Beth, tell our listeners, where's the best way to find you and follow all that you're doing? Okay, so on Twitter, uh, my my uh, handle is Roll Mommy, and um, and all across everything. Actually, Instagram it's Beth A. Feldman, but usually if you if you follow Roll Mommy, R O L E M O M M Y, because my whole vision was you were a role model for other working moms. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's where I am. And the 52 week show, I'll be sharing it on all of my social media channels. It's also on SoundCloud. So you could easily go on SoundCloud and and find it on iTunes. And and um, so I'm going to, you know, I started in the TV and syndication industry. So I will be syndicating my own content for now. Um, have had some discussions about potential radio too. But you know what, I want to crawl before I walk and run. <laughs> Well, we're happy to have you in this space with us and, you know, come on at any time and tell us what you're doing and what you're up to. Thank you so much. Thank and, you, and, Beth. Yeah, and continued success. I love your show and, and so happy for both of you. And, you know, have a wonderful, wonderful year. Thank you. Thank you, too. You, too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. So Bye. that was Beth Feldman. You, you'll have to listen to her, uh, her show, uh, 52 Weeks, which is coming out. Did I lose you, Kim? I lost my Kim. Um, so if you have not subscribed to us on in, on iTunes, you should head over there right now and do that at Broadcast. And we are also on social media at on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, all at Broadcast. I have my co-host back now today. Hi. Hi. Well, I lost I, you. I know. You hung up on me. I thought you took off with Kim. I mean, with uh, Beth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to go with her. She sounds more fun. So <laughs> I'm going to go co-host her show. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would not be surprised. So um, I think, you know, I, I love showcasing and featuring other women who are doing stuff. It doesn't, you know, matter that I, I don't think like, all right, we, we, you know, clearly do a radio show. We do a podcast like somebody else coming into the space. I think it, helping each other can only elevate each other. You know, it's just... Um, so well, I think you know, I was really I excited to it, hear. Though, I mean, this is like, uh, you know, our, our motto. I mean, it, it also kind of depends on where you're at in your life when you're confident. And, you know, when you're in a good space yourself, you see others as as, you know, an equal or a partner as a collaborator or, 
you know, is inspiration, as you mentioned earlier, you know, when you're, when you're feeling down or you're feeling insecure, everybody else is a threat, right? Or, you know, I mean, so I, I think at some point, like, I love being around people that are successful because it either shows me that I'm not where I want to be or that I'm good where I am or, you know, it, it pushes or, you know, compels me to do something different. So I, I right. just I think some of that just comes with maturity. But let's be honest, our show is nothing if it's not with cool broads with different voices. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, well, yeah, totally. Our show is not about us. So that's what I love about it is that we get to showcase so many uh, people who sometimes are doing similar stuff and sometimes are doing things that we haven't even imagined, you know? Right. But that's my point, though, is that because you and I are in 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 a healthier place in our life that we want to bring in other people to learn from versus, you know, if we're in our early 20s or, you know, at a different time in our life, we would have been like, oh, my God, no, because those people are going to take the spotlight away, you know, or whatever. I mean, you just... Sometimes I think that just comes with confidence, too, that yeah. you're willing to. Or we're just so old that we're just like over it. <laughs> yeah. Kidding. We just, our, 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 our own bandwidth is limited. So we need to bring in others to fill the air. Yeah. I just, you know, I mean, that's the whole thing. And you and I started this. It was all these conversations between us. But then we were like, if we're having these conversations, like imagine the things that we could hear from other women out there and, you know, and some men as well. Um, and that's when it was like really born. And so I love... I love that. So, yeah. Anyways, so speak, go, go ahead. ahead. No, nope, go ahead. No, I was going to say, speaking of men, you married to a 50 year old. He's an old <laughs> fart. <laughs> so you were there at the party. Thank you for coming. It's yeah. so funny because sometimes we get on the radio and, you know, when we're in the middle of like kids going to school and, you know, our jobs and life and all that stuff, like when we get together, it's like we're talking, it's production meetings and, you know, marketing and da da da, you know. So, it was kind of strange to have so much time off from doing the show and also doing my side stuff that you and I would talk about personal stuff. So I feel like we came to the show this morning and I'm like, oh, I can't really ask about your life because I know all about it. We were so close the other night when we went out for drinks that we didn't talk <laughs> one business. And then right at the end, you're like, okay, I don't need to make this business. But and then you <laughs> I was like, oh, she was so close. <laughs> uh, I know. What's the funny thing is I didn't even have a plan. It something came up and it was like. Oh, let me just get this out. Blah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah, I have her. And she's she's had a martini. Let me get her now. Let me get her doing something stupid. Hold on. Let me get her to, <laughs> to Facebook Live. You know, I'm just yeah. kidding. I didn't do that to you. Even I though know. it's so funny yeah. because people keep asking, like, when are you going to Facebook Live your show? I'm like, when Kim <sighs> lets me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I got a Brazilian blowout the other day, so um, my hair is always going to look good now. So knock yourself out. That doesn't mean I'm going to be dressed appropriately or um, right. have any makeup on, but my hair is always going to look good. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. So whenever um, you want, knock it out. Hey, so if you've listened to the show before, uh, you know that we are in the LA area. Uh, specifically, I don't usually get so specific, but specifically the Santa Clarita area. And have you heard, Kim, about Drew Barrymore's new show? Uh, you have uh, not something about some it's called Sa- lives. What is no it? Santa Clarita diet it's called oh I know yeah Um, and so it's about these like realtors in the area you know this is very suburban where we live Um, and so uh, it's I thought it was going to be just it's supposed to be a dark comedy or um, but I, I think it's about zombies after all like what? she's she, something about like the fact that like she dies and now she's like back. I don't know. I don't know the exact thing. Um, USA Today has a little story on it from yesterday. But um, yeah, isn't really? that funny? Yeah. Yeah. So it's really not. Um, here, I'm looking here. Oh, we, I she's, did not. She's undead. Well, because I guess that's a zombie, right? I don't know. I'm not a zombie. I, I won't watch. You turn, turn me off right when you said zombie. Right? I, I was surprised yeah. that it was more like this. But it's still, I think it might be funny. She she goes through a dramatic change and she's dead. While they tend to open houses and teenage daughter, the couple must. It's like yeah. why it's so funny the the way that it's written is like so. Oh, oh anyway, it's, yeah. Well, you know Netflix. Okay, so I've been watching a little bit of Netflix like yes. over the holidays. Um, they have a lot of like a little bit sci fi. <laughs> what a little bit of Netflix. Anyway. Well, they have like like all these like out there kind of shows. I so I binged watch um, the OA, um, and I still can't decide if I liked it or not. But, well, what does that um, stand for? First of all, well, you have to watch it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, but they're all like kind of sci-fi weird, like you know, like have all the like the senses. There's all these different 
shows on there that have like paranormal, you know, science fiction-y kind of background. So, you know, the fact that, that her show, Santa Cruz Diet, is is on Netflix um, with that kind of a background doesn't surprise me, actually, now that I'm watching it a little bit. Yeah, all the seems- original programming is not all that original since it's all in the same genre. <laughs> yeah, it, it's interesting how shows have gone in that direction. Like, you know, we're, we're warriors and zombies and, you know, all of that stuff. Like, uh, what happened to, like, I love just a good human, <laughs> you know, uh, current age drama or a comedy mostly yeah, comedy I've, I've i just love funny vampire zombie ghost I've, i'm not interested uh, unless I, it's I, the movie ghost i hope because that was unless great. it's what the movie ghost the bee ghost the movie ghost oh the movie ghost yeah no i still didn't i don't love that movie either really what no. you do to your hair so um, I, I don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> so i think it's funny that today um you called into the show because you have other things going on. And the whole time I just hear your little dog playing in the background. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's I, amazing. I think it's like, it's, that's, that's the show. It's real life, you know? Yes. But you, you now, um, uh, you know, you have the luxury of a doggy door in your house. Um, my doggy door consists of my, my garage and my, uh, my um, sliding glass door, which my pit bull bangs on. Um, I put a little bell on the door so that he would hit the bell and not scratch the paint and the drywall off my wall. Um, so I hear ding, 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 the whole ding, time. all day long. Yeah, that's funny. Hey, yeah. so uh, make sure you head over to iTunes and subscribe to our show. Um, we would also love to hear from you over at our Facebook page. We had a question uh, this week on our Facebook page. Did you answer, Kim? Um, do you remember no, the one? I so do, yeah. One yeah. of our Broad Squad members uh, asked us, she said she was working with a colleague who she's never met in person, but through emails, and he signed the email XO. And she's like, is yeah. that weird? Like, has professionalism just gone out the window? Um, so I find that yes. interesting. Um, yeah, I, I actually, uh, I think I talked about this in the show once. I had a woman... Uh, she was she would sign her emails to me with smiley faces and exos and honey and you know sweetie and I was like we don't know each other like it was so like I, I was a little creeped out like I and I didn't I'm like we're not it's not professional like and she I didn't I didn't like it it turned me off yeah and you know there are some people who are in certain fields and that's just that's what they do but um it it you know, she explained the situation. I don't want to give away too much of her situation, but she right. explained it to me and it seemed a little bit weird, you know? So anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah. so head on over there and talk to us about that. Twitter, Instagram, all of it. We'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show uh, or even sponsor the show, hit us up at broads at broadscast.com um, and, and talk to us there. So I'm yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we, 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 we have plenty of room um, in the broadcast space to welcome other well, well, there are other voices. And, and uh, we want to hear from our listeners as to what they want to hear about, what they want to talk about, um, who they want on the show, what products they want us to support. So, yeah, give it give us all you got. <laughs> give it give it up. Um, so thank you so much for listening today. Uh, we will be back with you next time and happy new year <laughs> to Kim and happy, happy new happy. year to all of you. And uh, I hope that you didn't make any resolutions to feel bad about yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> like us. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you next time. You are listening to Broadscast. For more from the Broads, head to broadscast.com. <laughs>